Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. In hopes for St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mom in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear? But a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer, <laughs> with a little old driver so lively and quick. I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner, on Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. Like dry leaves before the wild hurricane fly. When we meet with an obstacle, we mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my hand and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. <laughs> my name is Dasher. First reindeer from day one. Number one from day one. I've been making the Christmas run longer than anyone except the fat boy himself. <laughs> I've been the reindeer every year for as long as reindeer can fly. So I don't have to put up with this shit. One time I'm not the lead reindeer. One time. One foggy... You guys know this one? <laughs> one foggy... Come on, don't be scared. One foggy Christmas. Yeah, all right, fine, whatever. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's just that one time he was the lead reindeer. But what did it get him? Where am I? Right back at the front of the pack the very next year and every year since. So you want to tell me it was fog? Fine, it was fog. I'm not challenging that. I don't want to talk about it anyway. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is fog my reindeer ass. I have seen blizzards and torrents of freezing rain and sleet and lightning on Christmas Eve. I have seen an ice tornado. Jagged shards of ice like broken glass whipping through the air like bullets. Blood all over our bodies from being all cut up. And it's freezing cold and the wind. And we're pulling too short because Blitzen and the faggot stayed home. <laughs> they didn't want to go. Unsafe working conditions. My fuzzy ass, they were chicken shits. <laughs> they knew it was bad. They knew something was going to go wrong. They had that funny feeling you get in your atlas when you know there's going to be an earthquake or when something's just going to go down ugly. And it did. But that was the year we lost that what's his name? The guy Hollywood replaced. Uh, Vixen's mate, Victor. Yeah. His hind leg was cut up real bad in this weird ice storm. We came down too heavy on one of those real steep gabled roofs and slipped. Leg just snapped. Bone sliced right through the artery. He was dead before we even knew what happened. Fat boy just unhitched him. Left him on that rooftop. Said, boys, we got to run to make. Ho, ho, ho. And we did. <laughs> and there was Christmas. <laughs> thanks to the five of us, and thanks to Victor, there was Christmas. Well, he knew it was bad, too. Victor knew something like this could happen, but he wasn't sitting at home saying, That's too dangerous. I get a bad feeling. Every boy and girl on the face of this earth is counting on us to bring Christmas joy into their home. And we got no business sitting at the North Pole watching TV saying, Well, I'm not out in that. I don't get paid for that. That is exactly what we get paid for. I can name you 50 flying reindeer right now who make a run on a clear winter night with the temperatures in the mid 30s. That we're supposed to be the elite. Eight. Got a problem? We handle it. Fun? I will take the risk of flying head first in the side of a skyscraper that was not there last year. I've done it before. Three times. <laughs> Am I accusing anybody of un-Christmas like behavior? No, I am not. It's my risk, my problem, and it doesn't matter anyway because I survived it. I'm still here, I'm still at the front, still running, this year, next year, and every year. So, you want to hear my story? Yeah. yeah. Want to know what happened? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know and I don't want to know. So when I hear all this whining, when I see all these lawyers running all over the fucking place, that's not Christmas. That's not Christmas, and that's not taking responsibility for your own whatever actions. Well, that's not taking responsibility, period. Because we got a responsibility. And suppose something did happen. Well, what if? What then? Are we supposed to just 
hand it all over to the elves and just walk away? Oh, I'm sorry, that shouldn't have happened. I quit. I'm sorry, Johnny and Janie and Jamal and two billion other kids all over the world for whom Santa Claus is Christmas? I just wasn't happy here. So you can never be happy at Christmas time again for as long as you live. I mean, what happened to Rudolph was very, very, very tragic. But even after all that's happened, I want to say this about the kid. I know that if he could, he would jump right back into the harness again. Because that is what you do. That is what you do. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say to any of you about this. Hi. Hi. I'm Cupid. <laughs> the goddess of love. I'm sorry, did it say goddess? God? God of love? I never get that straight. <laughs> now, what kind of parent names their kid after the Roman god of pornography? It's no wonder I'm screwed up. I mean, how am I supposed to have a quote, unquote, a normal sexual development when my name is synonymous with romance? Oh, Cupid. Make me quiver with your magic shaft of love. <laughs> you know how many times I've heard that in my life? You know how many times i said no? About half. <laughs> and you know who the first person was who ever said that to me? Take a guess. Mrs. Claus. <laughs> now, that is sexual harassment. I haven't even hit puberty yet. I have to go ask someone what she meant. And you know why they call her Mrs. Claus? Yeah. No, really. Oh, Santa. Yeah. Then the woman I was gonna wear that shirt. Well, it's just something I overheard. That is one crazy couple. Some of the freaky shit that they're into, even I wouldn't touch. So, this whole thing comes as no surprise to me. Some of the Santa Claus are skeptical, but I believe every word of it. That man has been a walking, talking, holly jolly sex crime waiting to happen for years now. Do you know how many tight tongue asses he had across his lap? All of them. <laughs> Every single one. He made him stand in line. <laughs> Have you been a good little boy or girl? Ho, ho, ho. What do you want Santa to give you for Christmas? Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. <laughs> How about a choo-choo train? <laughs> How about a condom or some shark repellent? <laughs> Sometimes Santa just gives me the willies. Well, not me personally. Santa would never give me his willy. And that, <laughs> and that is because he thinks I might enjoy it. We would be wrong in that assumption. Well, being gay does not mean being utterly without class, taste, or discretion. Although somehow that is a popular misconception. But I play into it just to keep him away from me. I'm a Santa, red fur again for the season. You know how that makes me red. <laughs> the last thing I need is a jolly old elf coming down my chimney on Christmas Eve. <laughs> That's what he likes to call it. The Jolly Old Elf. It's red and white, did you know that? Little red outfit with white rim sound familiar. When Santa gets a chubby, it looks just like him. Big Santa, little Santa. And they're both my big quick. Now, I must repeat, I do not speak for first-hand experience. I think I'm the only reindeer Santa hasn't tried to molest. Why is that pedophiles thinks are so homophobic? And why is that homophobes thinks they are God's gifts to gays? Oh yes, you know I want you. All my life I've been looking for a greasy fat white, white beater <laughs> to abuse me and makes me squeal. <laughs> he hates me. I don't know why he just doesn't fire me and get it over with. I think it's because he likes to know but I'm right there, right there on the third row between Donner and Hollywood. Just far enough away not to give him cooties, but still close enough for that whip. <laughs> he loves that whip. And to tell you the truth, 
I kind of like it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is an everyday thing, my dear, but every once in a while it's nice. Adds a little holiday spice to the season. <laughs> it's the only thing that Santa and I enjoy doing together. On Dasher, on Dancer, on Cupid and Vixen, on Comet and Cupid and Cupid and Blitzen. <laughs> but really, this sadistic scene is a choice. I mean, don't tell Chris Kringle this, but I am not the only gay reindeer. <laughs> what would be the point? If you're gay and nobody else is, then you're not really gay. <laughs> you're a mom. <laughs> That's a bad example. Well, you know what I mean. I am just not the only gay reader. I'm not even the only one on the team. But I am the only openly gay reindeer, and I love it. <laughs> Hollywood said fame would go to my head. Trust me, it goes other places. <laughs> and if anybody asks you why Cupid is gay, this is what you tell them. <laughs> Oral sex. Because until you had had a solid job from a full-grown reindeer buck, then you've never been into heaven. <laughs> because those are nice and I've had my share. But when a bug gives you a snout, oh, goring you in the belly with his antlers, oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. Was I getting a bit body there? I'm Sarah. I'm sorry. After all, this is a family holiday. <laughs> but that's what we are with mommy and daddy and all the little children and everything that goes with it. Sibling rivalry and favoritism and little petty quarrels that grows into the most loathsome hatreds. And daddy's a workaholic and mommy's an alcoholic. And little sister is a porno queen and little brother's a sodomite. Chemical dependencies and botched suicide attempts to depress memories of sexual abuse and child molestation spewing forth at the dinner table over turkey and cranberry sauce. <laughs> and daddy's a rapist and mommy's a vivisectionist and they both want a divorce but they stay together for the sake of the children. But the children don't want them together. The children don't want them at all. They don't want any of this. They just want to be far, far away from mommy and daddy and all the other children. But they stick together anyways through thick and thin, with big gift wrap presents at the family holidays and big blooming bouquets at the family funerals. And this is what Christmas is all about. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to let her get me down. <laughs> <laughs>